Hello YouTube, it's me Dylan of Harmonic Design. Um, it's been a while since I recorded a video, so I figured, you know, um, the best time is yesterday, second best time is right now. And uh, yeah, so with kind of all the excitement and uh, craziness going on with cryptocurrencies right now, especially Dogecoin, I thought it'd be kind of fun uh, to basically build my own cryptocurrency. Um, well, actually, let's let's pump let's pump the brakes a bit on that. Um, I'm not actually going to build a cryptocurrency per se. Like, this isn't going to be released in the wild. You're not going to be able to buy, you know, HD coin or whatever the hell I call it. But I figured it would, uh, you know, kind of building a, a blockchain like like system in JavaScript would be a great kind of learning experience to uh, a you know test my skills and see you know where any issues and problems arise and see if I can overcome them. And uh, it's also kind of a in-depth, you know, dive in onto how the blockchain works to begin with. I mean, if you're actually coding your own blockchain, you have to have a fairly good understanding of how it works and the basic principles. So I thought that this could be a fun way to kind of dive in and uh, see how that all works and plays out. So with that, let's just get in and get started here. So I'm just calling this HD coin because I'm not very original. So uh, the first thing we need is uh, we'll need an index file just, you know, so we can see our console logs and see that. And then we'll need our main JavaScript file. And this is it. I um, I don't know if we end up needing a lot more functions, I might, you know, modu modulate this or whatever, but I'm not anticipating needing anything else here. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to open this up in VS Code, but feel free to use whatever editor you want. this over and there we go so yeah I'm just using the latest version of VS code um, and there's nothing really special here actually there's one there's one special thing uh, I have a pet let me drag this down here so I don't know how well the recording's gonna pick it up but I have this little pet dog here on the bottom now so I'm gonna I'm gonna keep him up you know what? let's let's throw him a ball throw him a ball there there we go chase the ball buddy there, my little virtual pet, and he can help keep us comfortable as we're coding. So, I mean, we don't actually need to set any of this up. Um, you know, we're, we're really just using this index file just to initialize the JavaScript file, and so we can console log out our data. That's really it. So this basically here is the HTML file. We don't really need anything else. In fact, let's actually load this up. Switch the camera there. I guess we can get rid of all that. So, yep, this is basically the screen we're going to be looking at just to console log our data and make sure that all that's kind of working. Pretty simple and straightforward. Uh, so now let's look at our JavaScript file. So it's currently empty. We don't have anything in here. So I guess let's get started. So I guess the first thing we want to do is we want to create our kind of uh, crypto master variable, our, our master objects here. So we'll go const. Um, so what do we want? Let's just use a dollar sign. So there, there's our object. So you know how like in jQuery you can be like, um, you know, whatever, and you're like automatically calling things in jQuery? We're basically doing the same kind of thing here, except we're, we're not going to be chaining because we don't need it. But we're basically just saying like, you know, this dollar sign in jQuery, if you have jQuery loaded, the dollar sign is just a reference to the main jQuery function. Like you could also write this as, you know, const jQuery equals this, and then I can just be like, you know, const dollar sign equals jQuery. And now we have like this kind of short reference where you can just call, you know, dollar sign to access this. We're basically doing the same thing here. It's just a quicker, easier way to access this object. So what are we gonna need here? We're gonna need um, a variable for blocks. This will be an array and it'll store all of our generated blocks on the chain. That's pretty self-explanatory. That should be easy. Um, I guess we'll need like an init function. We'll make it asynchronous. You know what? Since we're going for the memes, let's actually go for the memes. Oh, cool! I already have it in my, already have it in my history. So 
So let's just console log that so that we know it started up. And let's um, actually initialize it. Helps if I use the right symbol. So let's just make sure that, uh, you know, this is working so far. And there we go. We can see our console log. HD coin has initialized. Fantastic. So now what do we need to do? Now we need to actually get into the blockchaininess of the blockchain. So what do we need? So we're going to need um, a Genesis block. So what the Genesis block in the blockchain, it's like the first block, the initial block that you put on the chain. So let's create a new function called um, create Genesis. Yeah. Well, by the way, almost all of these functions will be asynchronous because we need to, uh, you know, make sure that the they're being called in the right order and that function B doesn't finish before function A type thing. So we're going to be doing a lot of async and await in here to make sure that everything happens when we need it to happen and not, uh, you know, too soon. So for the Genesis block, I guess what we need is we'll need our initial data. So for instance, we'll go on. Um, so, so the way, so I guess let's first start by the blockchain. So what the blockchain does is basically do you create blocks, which are like hashed values of some data. So what we need to do now is we need to figure out what that data is. So a data, so data could be a message. It could be hello world. It could be, um, you know, an image. You could, you know, base 64 encode an image and use that as your data. Or, you know, as a currency, the data would be, you know, uh, probably a value. It would be a number value and maybe also a message or something like that. Um, the point is, you know, data is data. We can pretty much use any data we want. For this example, I'm just going to use probably a simple message. So, you know what? Let's, let's create that. Let's go constant message equals um, HD coin is the next unicorn crypto going to the moon. So that's the message that we're going to create, that, that we're going to add to our very first Genesis block. Um, the next thing we're going to need to know is the um, the current date time. And we're going to need that so that we know, uh, you know well, for, it's just interesting. So a, a date time helps make sure that um, it's more unique. So for instance, if someone tries to create multiple blocks with the exact same message, we don't want the hash to be on the same or even similar. Um, the next thing, it's just like good to know. We want to know when when was this block actually created, right? So we'll go on, oops, const date time equals date dot now. So what date dot now is this will basically, um, you know, give us a numerical representation of the date in milliseconds. Um, I don't remember what the actual date is, but I think it's like the number of milliseconds or maybe, yeah, I think it's the number of milliseconds that have passed since like some date in 1960 something. I don't, I don't remember what the exact date is, but that's basically what this will, uh, you know, pass out. So we'll use that um, as part of our block. Um, we'll need to know what the previous hash is. Because the way the blockchain works is every block uses the previous block's hash to create its own hash. That way it's kind of like each, that, that's, what, that's what makes it chained, right? Because each block has the previous block's hash value as part of it. That's kind of what makes it a, you know, a, a chain. So we're just gonna set that to zero because this is the Genesis block. We don't have a previous hash to use, so we're just gonna use zero. And then um, we're gonna wanna know like the block ID, the block number. Const ID equals zero. We'll, we'll, we'll just increment this by zero. Basically, whatever the however many blocks we have, that's basically going to be what the current ID is. But uh, you know, maybe you want to expand this. Maybe you want to generate unique IDs or something like that. You know, th that's something that we could use here. So this will be the data we're going to use. You know what? I actually changed my mind. Instead of having these as separate values, let's let's do this instead. Const block. So let's just do it this way instead. This is probably just a nicer, cleaner way to do it. All 
And now we can just get rid of that. We don't need that. There we go. So this is basically the data of the block. So this is so when we create our, our when we actually create the block, this is the data that we're actually going to save to the chain. So now what we need to do is we need a way to hash this to hash this up. So we'll create a new function called um, I don't know hash block. And once again, it'll be asynchronous. And this will need a parameter for the block. And yes, I noticed that I said has block instead of hash. I'll fix that right now. There we go. So, so, so what we're doing here is so let's actually let's actually initialize this as well. There we go. So what we're doing is we're first saying, hey, let's create the genesis block. We're setting the block data, and now we're basically sending that data to the hash block function. Great. So what's the hash block function? Well, the hash block block function is the function that's actually going to take this data, hash it, validate the hash to make sure it's a valid hash, which I'll get into in a moment. And then if it's valid, it'll basically send it to the block. Yeah, that's basically yeah, that's basically how it'll work here. So what we need is well, we'll get into the actual hashing in a moment. So what we'll, we're not going to, I'm not going to actually hash it right now. Right now, I'm just going to basically assume that we've already hashed it and we're just going to add that to the block. So we'll basically just go um, dot blocks dot push block. So that's what the hash block is going to look like um, for now. Obviously, we're going to extend this out and this is going to be our primary function that does all the um, the blockchain-y things here. So we got a hash block and all that. Um, what else are we going to need here? So I guess what we need now is we need a way to add a new block. So for instance, await. And what we're going to want to do is here, we're going to pass the value of the new message. So um, this is a new block. And now we're going to need to create a new function here called add block. And you guessed that we're going to async it. And there we go. So now this is where we start to get a bit more um, interesting. So we're going to need um, to know what the ID is. So yeah, actually, so, so yeah, so, so the ID is basically going to be the length. So we'll call it um, const ID equals um, so that's the current ID. So what, however many things we have in here, how, however many blocks we have, that's going to be the ID of the block that we're currently creating. Great. That's nice and easy. Now we're going to need to um, create our block data again, just like this. So very similar to our Genesis block. So the message here is going to be the message that we pass here. Once again, we're creating the date time is now. The previous hash is, so yeah, we're going to need to figure out what the previous hash is. And the ID is going to be the ID. And then we'll go, uh, we'll, 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 we'll hash it up again. And that's pretty much it. As you can see, so far we're pretty simple. So let's actually console log our blocks. And let's see what happens here. So let's see if I made any stupid issues. Undefined, awesome. Oh, it's because I put block instead of blocks. There we go. So yeah, we got two blocks here. So as you can see, the first block has the date time, the ID of zero. It's got the message and it's got the previous hash value of zero. 
Here it's got the date time, which is the same because we ran them at the same time. It's got the correct ID. It's got the new message and the previous hash. So now what we're going to need is we're going to need a function to get that previous hash. Actually, you know what? Let's, let's build in... Eh, yeah, let's just do one. Uh, let's, just, let's just write a function called get previous hash. Get prev hash. And the way this will work is we'll basically go, um, hmm, how do we want to do this? I guess there's a couple ways we can do this. So I guess we'll do let index equal um, dot blocks dot length minus one. And then we're going to go return dot blocks index. So what we're doing here is we're basically saying, okay, how, how many blocks do we have? Great. Let's get the previous index value of that and just return whatever that is. So now in our add block, we can go um, let's prev hash equal awaits And let's see if that works. This actually isn't going to be exactly what we need, but it'll hopefully get the idea across. So here we have date time message, previous hash, perfect. And here, yep, the previous hash contains basically all the data from the previous block. Um, when we actually start hashing our data, instead of just creating this as like an object, it'll just be like the hash value. But we'll, once again, we'll get into that. Um, actually, we pretty much need to get into that now. So what do we need now? So we got our, our, I guess, yeah, I guess we actually need to start hashing. So the, so the way hashing works is, so there's basically, there's basically two principles that we're going to need to do with hashing. Um, luckily, I do have some experience encrypting and decrypting data with some of my other stuff. So I have a bit of a head start here. But what we're going to want is we're going to want a way to basically encrypt our data using two, no, we're using three different principles. The first principle that we're going to want is we're going to want the hash to always be the same length. So by that, I mean, we're going to want it to always return eight characters or 64 characters or 256 characters or whatever it is. We're going to always want the hash to be the same length. The second thing we're going to want is basically called the difficulty, which is basically we're going to just use like a, a random string at the beginning of the hash. And every time we generate a hash, we're going to say like, oh, this does um, the big starting of the hash equal this string that we chose? If it does, it's a valid hash. If it's not, generate a new hash, which brings us to principle three. If we keep sending the same, if we keep trying to hash the same data without changing that data, we're going to always get the same result. So we need to basically create um, like a nonce or, or, or a counter. We're going to basically need, yeah, we'll call it a counter. And we're going to basically increment this counter every time we try to hash. And we're going to append that counter to the data we're hashing. That way, um, the data will change every single time we try a new hash. So we get a new hash value so that there's an actual greater chance that the hash will, you know, validate. Um, so the, I know that sounded confusing, but hopefully um, once we start building it, um, it should make a bit more sense here. So it's the first thing we're going to do is we're going to need um, to choose a hash. So probably um, one of the most simplest ones is basically SHA-256. Let's just Google that. By default, I use DuckDuckGo. Oh, we should actually probably type in JavaScript. <laughs> so here's one that I've apparently looked at before. It's The problem is that this is like an actual library and we don't, I don't really want to use a third party library, especially since, you know, SHA is something that should be fairly simple to do. So here we go, small SHA implementation. This sounds um, promising. So 
So 849 bytes, that certainly sounds good. So I'm just going to copy this over. Um, obviously, if you're putting this in like a live project, do your due diligence and actually um, verify this function, you know. But uh, for, for, for where I'm standing, it looks good enough. So I'm going to create this in our hash block. I'm just going to add that in there. Let's uh, beautify it. <laughs> so this is what the minified version of it looks like. So I'm just going to go... Um, there we go. So we have a function here called SHA-256. And that's what we're gonna to use to hash our data here. So for example, let's do, um, let's actually echo that out. Let's go back to our HD coin. Unexpected identifier line 26. Oh. So what I did is in instead of doing like a constant function, I'm basically just changed it to a regular function. That way, now we're saying A is not defined. Oh, wait, what? Okay, I'm a little confused here why this isn't working. Oh, I see. Okay. So it's just the way that uh, the original function was printed out is kind of weird. See how it's like function A? And then it's saying like A is not defined. So basically, yeah, I'm just going to be like... Sorry, let's go back to this. So I just ran that and now it's working. So you can see it's actually creating the hashed nonces there. And as you can see, they're both the same. They're the exact same value because this is running twice. It's running once for the genesis and once for this. And it's creating the same value here because we're passing it the same data. So the reason I needed to name this A is because this is A here, but the function's also basically referencing itself. So I would have had to replace every single instance of that and go through, and I just, I was too lazy for that. So I'm just, so basically for, from now on, our SH256 algorithm or function is just called A. That's the name of our function. Okay, so now that we've verified that it's actually correctly or apparently correctly hashing things, we need to actually figure out how we want to do this. So let's look in here. So we don't want to, we don't want to actually add it until we verify it. So I guess let's actually first make our, our verify. So we'll call it, we'll make a new function called verify. We'll call it um, hash, because that's where we're gonna send it. Basically, we're just gonna say return hash dot starts with, and then whatever the value that we want to test against. So this can be basically, well, it can't be anything. I can't say Z4 because the letter Z isn't like a valid hash. So it needs to be, um, uh, it can be any number. And it can also be uh, letters from, I believe, A to F, lowercase, because it's like basically hex value. So I could be like um, A, B, A or something like that. So basically what we're doing is every time we generate a hash, so to go back here to um, these generated hashes, we're basically checking the first three letters of that hash and saying, do, do those first three letters equal AB8? Yes or no? If it's yes, this will return true. If it's no, it'll return false. 
And we could do anything. We could be like 000 or 025 or 0543, whatever. Just keep in mind that the, uh, the longer you make this value, the more computationally expensive it's going to be to, uh, to, to, to find a hash that actually verifies. Um, so just keep that in mind. And it's basically like in crypto, you know, the concept of like proof of work. This is kind of like the difficulty level of how hard it is to to create that hash. So I'm just I, I just chose 0551 randomly. Um, you know, doesn't matter. So that's what we got here. So so we have a, a way to validate the hash. So what we're going to do here is we're gonna, now remember when I said that you need to change the data each time. So we're going to need we're going to use a counter for that. So we're going to go block dot. Actually, it's just yeah, let's call it a nonce equals zero. So we're going to start at zero. And then what we're going to do is we're going to send this to a new function that's going to basically recursively generate nonce, uh, that's going to recursively generate hashes until it finds a hash that is valid. So this two, in those two ways, I guess we could, we could just use a while, we could do a while loop, or we could do a recursive. Um, I don't know, let's do a recursive. It's more, it's more, a recursive is fun. Recursive is fun, people. So we're going to go on async function I don't know, let's just call it recur. And we'll send it the block. And that's that. And now we'll go await recur block. So we actually send it that data. And then here we'll go. Um, so what we're gonna what we're gonna want to do now is we're gonna want to first uh, we're gonna want to first basically create a custom string that is our data. So we're gonna go um const data equals, um, hell, we can just go, here's, here's a, oh, wait, wait, sorry, that's json.stringify. <laughs> that's a, that, that's, I feel like I'm kind of cheated by doing that, but that would work beautifully. So there we go, we just created our custom, our custom data string. Um, let's actually take a look at that. Let's take a look at that just to show you what it would look like. So as you can see, here's their actual data string. So it contains the uh, the message, it contains the date time, it contains the previous hash, if previous hash exists. It includes the ID, and it'll include whatever the nonce is. Pretty simple, pretty straightforward. Let's go back to here. So now that we got that, we're going to actually want to generate the hash. So let's go let hash equal, well, we should probably make this asynchronous. Await a data. So let's actually console out that hash just to show you what the hash looks like. So this is what our two hashes look like. And because we're using different data for each of these, this is the Genesis block, this is the second block. We're getting actual completely different hashes here. This is really weird. Every time I switch um, cameras, it zooms me down to the bottom of the screen there. That's annoying. So now that we've got the hash, what we want to do is we basically want to validate the hash. Does the hash start with 0551? Yes or no? So now we can go if awaits So if 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 it, if it if it's successful, then we want to basically um, we want to add the block. So we're gonna go dot blocks dot push. Actually, let's do let's do it. Let's create this as an object. So there we go. So we got the block and we got the hash and we're and we're pushing that up. And if it doesn't match, which let's face it, odds are it's not going to, then what we want to do now is we want to go um, block dot nonce equals block dot nonce plus one. So we want to increase the value of the nonce by one. 
and we want to um, recur. And send that data back to it. And since this is going to be uh, calculating it, let's actually go and take a look at our nonce. Um, this is kind of it. This was actually, um, I gotta be honest, this was much quicker. And, I mean, it's only been 30 minutes. This has been much quicker and easier than I thought. I feel like I'm missing something here. Okay, here we go. <laughs> so things are definitely um, happening here. So here I am, I'm printing out the nonce. This is basically how many times we've attempted to hash it. Is it still running or did it, did it freeze? I think I think it froze. Can I stop this? Can I? Yeah, I think I froze it. It's not even counting past. Yeah, so I definitely, I froze it somehow. Um, I was a little worried this was going to happen. So let me uh, close that down. I guess before I load it up, let's actually stop the, re, uh, let's stop the recursion just so it doesn't die on me again. There we go. Okay, so it didn't, it didn't die on me this time. So I guess one thing we can do is we can just like, uh, this, this isn't a good solution. This is just a temporary solution. I just want to check it here. So let's set a timeout. Oh, let's slow it down to like 100 milliseconds or something just to test it out. Ooh, okay, so here's one issue. So it's basically trying to do them um, both. Well, you know what? Let, let's slow it down anyways. I mean, we're trying to generate two blocks at the same time here. Like, let's let's hold our horses and only do the... Let's start with just the Genesis block. Hmm, maybe 100 milliseconds was too slow. I mean, this could potentially take thousands of thousands of seconds, right? There, I just switched it to 10. I ain't got all day. Hmm, we're still getting that slowdown. It shouldn't be slowing down like that. I'm not sure why it's slowing down like that. The only thing I can think of is that maybe um, there we go. I just canceled the. The only thing I could think of is that maybe I screwed up with my verify. Maybe that will, like maybe it's just not returning true. And let's get rid of this timer. I feel like that's just screwing things. Maybe, like it sh I shouldn't need the timer for this to work. It should just work. Still not particularly liking this. So something ain't right here. Let's take a look here. It shouldn't be it shouldn't it shouldn't be this computationally expensive. It shouldn't be this hard.
so what can I do? So I guess first of all, let's just let's reduce the difficulty to something smaller and easier. So what I did is I changed the difficulty to just zero. Does it does it start with a zero? Yes or no? So this is something that should happen pretty damn quickly. There we go. So that so that worked. So we got it after 18. So yeah, so after 18 iterations, we got something that started with a zero. So yeah, I think that maybe my difficulty level was just too high and it was freezing up Chrome. I don't know, what if I do 058 or something like that? How long will that take? I'm just still getting that freeze up. I wonder why that's freezing. Let's take a look at this here. Let's take a look at my, my logic. So we're, we, we're setting the block nonce to zero when hash block is first initialized. Yep, that's good, that makes sense. We're calling the recursion, which is the thing that actually sets it. Oh, wait, it just it just finished. It just finished. Okay, so yeah, it was working. It was just taking a super long time. And I hope that gives you... Uh, the fact that we, we're doing something so small, the Genesis block with something that's a pretty small proof of concept, took twenty seven over 2,700 iterations to, to actually hash it, right? You know, that's... um, It's pretty crazy. That's a lot of work, but okay. So at least we know. We at least we know it's working. We know it's working. So let's go back here. It's really annoying that it keeps scrolling down. I wonder why that's happening. When we find a hash, let's console log it out. And um, yeah. I guess we'll need to do that as well. Just do some light organization here. To me, the order of operations just makes more sense there. This should work. I think we can actually just work this just right here as is. Um, let's give it a testy. Oh, what the hell, that happened fast. How come it took so much longer the first time? So, oh, so this, it found it after only 137. And this time it found it after, only, so this time was a lot freaking faster. But one thing I want to point out now is now the previous hash value is contained in there as well. So this is it, uh, guys, this is it. We, we, just, we just did a whole blockchain, I mean, um, Looks like we're coming up to about 40, 45 minutes or something in the recording. Um, yeah, we just we just made a blockchain. So I just added a couple more blocks here. So let's just see how long it takes to create the Genesis block plus three custom blocks. That is cool. Yeah, it's happening much faster now. So here we have the Genesis block. HD coin is the next unicorn crypto going to the moon. 
and we can see when it was, uh, we can basically see everything. We can see the date time, the ID of that block. Is the ID working? Do we have the ID? Yep, ID. Perfect. So the block, so the date time's working. So yeah, we can even see the date time is actually updating for each one because it takes, you know, time for the block to generate. We can see the IDs updating. We can see we're getting the message. We can see that it's even containing the nonce, which tells you how many times we needed to basically hash it until we found one that started with the 058. And we can see that the previous hash is working. So let's make sure. So this hash, let's expand this out so it's easier to see. So this hash, hash ends in 327F. Previous hash, 327F. Um, F6A3. F6A3. So yeah, we're, we're, we're correctly getting the previous hash. You gotta remember, because we're basically stringifying it to turn it into like a just a normal string, and then using that string to create the hash, basically every new block contains basically all of the data of the previous block, and that's how it creates its hash, which is just a really cool concept. So for instance, if I wanted to go in and modify this data, it would have to be rehashed. We'd need to find a new hash that starts with 0580. So we basically need to find, okay, so it, it hashes with this number. We need to find another number it hashes with, right? To, to, st to start with that. And then we need to also modify every single block down the chain because each block depends on the one before it. So that's generally speaking how, uh, I mean, this is obviously a very simple, you know, uh, blockchain example here, but this is basically how it works. I mean, um, you know, we, we could create a new function. So for instance, I have a function called get prevash. We can make another function called just like get block and you just pass in an index value and it gets that block. And, you know, we could do a, a validation, which is basically go back in the chain and, and validate each hash again to make sure that, yep, it works, you know, which, which would actually be fairly, fairly easy to do, um, you know, because we're not unlike, unlike the first time where it's like we're doing the nonces and however many, you know, you know, 6,000 times it took us to find it. We only need to run it once per block. So the difficulty in validating the entire blockchain is based off of how many blocks you have. We only have four blocks, so it would be stupidly quick and easy. But I mean, if you had a massive blockchain with millions of blocks on it, then you would need to validate a million blocks in order to, to validate the entire chain. But it's still possible because all you basically need to do is like, you know, is this, 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 and this true? And let's update this to be whatever that is just for extra security. And let's see whether we get the same hash. If you get the same hash, fantastic, it worked. If the hash is different, then you know not to trust that block and you don't include it. Um, you know, obviously this doesn't go full in as in this isn't like decentralized. I'm not connected to other computers. We're just running this locally. But yeah, this is basically how it works. I mean, I'm just even just spitballing. You can literally turn this into a into a messaging app or something like that or you know sky's the limit so yeah i actually found this kind of um interesting i found it much easier than i thought it'd be i mean i guess just to show you just how like the basic concept of the chain of the blockchain it's fairly simple and straightforward unless i'm missing something stupid i mean everyone out there knows about blockchains maybe i'm missing something incredibly stupid it's like no this would never work or anything like that but um from where I stand, I'm pretty happy with this. So I hope that you found this interesting. And um, yeah, just uh, let me know if I missed anything.